Hi there folks and welcome to the Captain's Horror Meltdown. I, as always, am Cammy, your captain on this journey and we've got a special journey today. I'm actually joined as usual by my 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 uh, comrade in arms, John, <laughs> but today he is actually a machine gunner Oof. hanging out the side of the helicopter that we are flying on our side mission on this night. <laughs> This is advanced. Excellent. We have left the boat. We are going on a side mission. It's going to be a flying side mission. It's the, uh, the first of, I would I would say, probably several upcoming, well, certainly several planned upcoming side missions, which we are deviating from our usual path. Yep, I think we're we uh, gonna, breaking the chain, I think is probably the... We are little, technically breaking little. the chain. Oh, God, the chain has been broken already so early. <laughs> but um, this will be coming out completely out of sync from our normal shows as well. And what we want to do is we just want to have a look at some big films that we're really excited about as they come out. This weekend we had the opportunity so i like i have a yearly event that i host uh called the captain's horror meltdown as well uh which is a select group of us get together and have a little diy uh horror stroke genre film festival uh at mine projector on Sound sound system cranked to the max, way louder than I usually allowed it. <laughs> lots of men, lots of beer, and lots of grub as well, usually. And we all take turns picking films that we want to watch, and there can be no arguing about it. And the premiere for this event was Mandy. Yes. Which we were all extremely excited about having seen the trailer some time ago, and which came out the Monday before the meltdown. Yeah, so that was a bit of a, yeah, we were, we were all very much praying it was going to be out in time for the meltdown and, oof, nick of time. No question oh, about it. just in the nick of time. Um, and so Mandy uh, Panos Kosmatos directed his second feature film, uh, sorry, Nicolas Cage, and yeah, we are recording, I don't know, do you want to date stamp this? It'll be coming out tomorrow, I guess, won't it? But yeah. Uh, we're recording this on the 5th of November. Remember, uh, bon- remember. Remember, remember. Bonfire night here in the UK. Yeah, so and- if, if you do hear uh, explosions <laughs> in the background, it is just fireworks. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. We Actually, our side mission isn't into a literal war zone. <laughs> <laughs> we will be flying back to the boat tonight. Don't worry, guys. Um, yeah, basically in this episode, we're going to just, uh, as we're breaking the chain, we're just going to... Uh, deviate a little we're just going to have a little bit of a chat about our experiences of films what we thought about it it won't be entirely spoilery but it'll be if you're if you don't want any spoilers at all then it's probably best not to listen until you've watched the film yeah I mean um, what, what I would say is I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to put in this probably in the, <laughs> in the subtitle of this largely spoiler free because um, what I found difficult was I wanted it to be completely spoiler free so I thought I'm going to try and read some of the reviews that are online um, but the vast majority of them tell you what the story is, but they kind of have to because the story is amazingly sparse. Yes, 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 yes. Well, actually, I think I may have, um, I may have stumbled upon a very good way for us to get the story out of the way in the most efficient way possible. Okay. Uh, I now usually on the podcast we always have a look at the what the BBFC have had to say about things. BBFC have a summary. They always have a summary of the film, uh, whatever film they're certifying, which is usually just straight to the point. And it is that is the case with Mandy. So I will give you the BBFC blurb on Mandy. Here we go. Mandy is an action film in which a lumberjack sets out to rescue his girlfriend who has been kidnapped by a cult. Yes. There you go. And <laughs> seems 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 pretty fair. Um, that is absolutely bang on. And I mean, what I will wow, say, you're, you're what pro- a fucking journey you're going to get aside absolutely. from that. I mean, what I will say is, I think everyone's probably aware it is a revenge-based film. Yes. Um, so we're under no disillusions as to why he would be <laughs> on the on the revenge warpath. Um, so I think. Uh, maybe to set us up, I've got a little audio clip which um, fire that in, give you a little flavour of what's going on. Um, 
Now, this is on the suggestion of Doc, and now, Cammy, I'm going to absolve you of all <laughs> <laughs> all repercussions. I have right. re- researched this myself, right. and apparently, under what we're doing, it is legal <laughs> to... <laughs> <laughs> to use copyrighted sound clips for films if you are merely discussing the film. Excellent. But well, I've, got, I've done that, but I'm going to say publicly that if it goes wrong, <laughs> you had nothing to do with this. Right, okay, fine. Great. Well, thanks for that, John. Yeah. Um, so I, in this section, um, basically this is one of my favourite scenes in it, um, involving Nick Cage and Bill Duke, who plays a character called Carruthers. Um, as soon as you see Bill Duke and you listen to this podcast, you are immediately going to recognise him as Mac from the original Predator film. Oh, um, yes. Absolutely. Uh, it's one of the few kind of conversational <laughs> scenes in it, to be honest. Um, but yeah, this is uh, just when uh, Nick Cage meets Bill Duke um, to get tooled up on his revenge mission. Oh, uh, if you just just fast forward a couple of minutes if you don't want to hear anything that happens in the film at all. But uh, I, I like this as a little idea, and uh, it's a great little scene. So uh, check it out. So what you hunting? Jesus freaks. I don't know. They were the season, man. Yeah, well, they were weirdo hippie types. <laughs> Whole bunch of them. Then there, there was the muscle. It didn't make any sense. They were bikers and gnarly psychos and. It's crazy evil. Black skulls. Black skulls. Look at me. For a while now, word's been coming down from the big rig, something dark and fearsome out there. No one knows where they come from. First, it was stories from the interstate. Leaving truckers for dead, prostitutes vanishing, and gutted bodies on doorsteps, and always the same. Biker gang, black bikes, only seen at night. Weird shit. There are stories that there was a chapter that ran courier for a manufacturer of LSD. He took a disliking to them and cooked them up a special batch. And they have never been right in the head since. I seen them once, from a distance. What you're hunting is rabid animals, and you should go in knowing that your odds ain't that good, and you will probably die. Don't be negative. Last I heard on the CB, they were spotted down near Spirit River. When I seen them things, they were in a world of pain. But you know what the freakiest part was? What's that? They fucking loved it. Great. Hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> <laughs> for for Cammy and I, that was a lot shorter than for you guys. Oh uh, well, yeah, it was a fly visit. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, will we just batter into what we thought of the film? What, what were your That's... expectations going into the film, John? Um, oh, always quite difficult, one of these things, because, um, I mean, the trailer kind of, wow, I mean, it looks pretty spectacular. Um, yeah. But at the same time, it doesn't give away, which I don't think we're going to try and do here, it doesn't give away, you know, it, well, it gives away, essentially, why he's on the revenge path, or it certainly alludes to it. <laughs> Um, but it doesn't really delve too far into the carnage, which I quite liked. Um, it really sort of dwells on the psychedelic aspects of the visuals of this film, of which there are many. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. Um, so, yeah, my experience, I wasn't entirely sure, but then, of course, I saw there was lots of stills released for the film, and like, well, it looks like absolute carnage. 
and you've got Nick Cage in there, you've got Revenge, and you've got Carnage, your expectations are high, let's be honest. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's not... I mean, it's uh, safe to say that we are all fans of Crazy Cage. I mean, he's done yeah. his fair share of stinking films. Oh, but yeah. when you get crazed Cage on a sort of demented mission, then... There's few actors that are more entertaining to watch, I'd say. Absolutely. I know one of the things, um, uh, Mitch, who was with us uh, during the weekend, one of his remarks, it's very true, I mean, as wild as this film is, his performance is actually largely quite subtle a lot of the time. It is. It is. It's pretty, it just shows how absolutely nuts this film is, that Cage is complete, like, you know, like pretty down to earth in it, you know? Yeah, and um, there are scenes of just... I mean, look out for a scene in a bathroom is all I'm going to say. It is <laughs> extraordinary. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I mean, you know, I, I might have played you that clip, but all it would have been was uh, sounds of anguish, really. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> just wild. Just wild. Well, good, I mean, I had extremely high expectations going into it. I think we all did after seeing the trailer. Uh, but um, I... I, I was aware of Beyond the Black Rainbow, because uh, Matos' first film, uh, although I hadn't seen it. I was actually a subscriber to the Death Waltz, the, the original soundtrack oh, yeah. uh, company. I was a, I think you were early, was early doors as well. A little bit, yeah. I sort of stuck with them for their... They did it three three times in a row, I think. Uh, they had three subscription packages, uh, which were great. But um, one of the soundtracks that they released was Beyond the Black Rainbow, which... to as, which is a fantastic soundtrack, but as far as I'm aware, the film just wasn't available over here. I, I thought that it was on Netflix over here, but I think at the time uh, that that came out, I was actually just watching US Netflix all the time. Right. So I think it was on there. So he's he, his first film was uh, seems to have been a completely self-funded, um, independently funded, uh, psychedelic uh, trip of a movie, which just looks like it's got incredible visuals i don't really know much about it um it's not available to buy in the uk um so it's pretty hard to get your hands on but i mean i guess we could order the disc from the states and well, have a watch. And hope, i'm really hopefully, interested hopefully, in that that will, now. hopefully that will change now um well hopefully yeah now that this has come out um and yeah so i didn't really know what his work was going to be like but i had really high hopes from seeing the trailer and i was just all from the opening seconds of this film I just knew this was the kind of film for me. Yeah, I yeah. like absolutely love love a revenge film, and I love uh, anything sort of wigged out, psychedelic, trippy, cinema wise. And this is just like, I mean, starting off with a bit of Crane Crimson, uh, Nick Cage in the woods cutting down trees. It just you've just got the vibe straight away. Yeah, yeah. That he's an absolutely badass. And this is going to be like a wigged out film, and it just it just never really lets up. And it's one of the things that I was really amazed at. I think I said it at the end as well when we'd finished watching it. We were all just like absolutely blown away by it. But that it's it's a two hour movie mm. that could have been it could have felt really slow, but it just zips by. It's incredible. It zips because, by. <clears throat> I mean, I would, I would now, I would kind of, dis it's weird, because I would describe it as probably quite a slow film. I mean, you know, yeah, yeah. it doesn't really, in terms of action, doesn't really get rocking until about the kind of, well, maybe, well, before the hour mark, I guess, but, um, but it is, make no mistake, quite a slow film, but it's so brilliant in all aspects that it, does absolutely hammer past. Oh, and it's it, just utterly captivating. Yeah. Utterly captivating. You it's just not, can't take not, your eyes off the one, screen. It's not one minute of it we're like, oh, I could do without that. Yeah. No, and it just looks absolutely phenomenal. So yeah, basically we I mean I, I mean I guess like we you know we're not we're not going to go into heavy heavy duty spoilers on it, but yeah, it just uh he encounters this cult that he's got to. He's he, that, it's just it's just bonkers. It's completely like drug infused psychedelia. Yeah. That like I think I was uh, speaking to uh, Robbie, my, uh, my my pal, uh, great pal and uh, colleague Robbie, um, who phoned me today out of the blue just to say. Have you seen the film Mandy? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yes, yes, I have, and he was like see when, like when she's like uh, dosed with acid 
uh, in her in her eyes or whatever. Oh you know? dear God! Um, yeah. He's just like, is it? It's just one of the most realistic, like if, uh, loads of it just feels like a real trip. Yeah, Do you know what I, I mean. Think, uh, the it's one the- of the closest like realizations I've ever seen of like some of the real effects of tripping. I think because it's understated as well. It's not like oh we're going out of our way to make this what is this what it's like to be an acid? Woohoo! Yeah, yeah, they've, yeah, they've really kind of. Yeah, they've just kind of got a realism about it. And as someone said, imagine watching this on mushrooms. On oh, mushrooms. Oh, wow. oh, oh my wow. God. <laughs> Man, that is... Do you know what? I'm going <laughs> to... When that, when that day comes round at some point in the future, I'll be like, maybe maybe, maybe, maybe there'll have been a bit of picking going on. I Just maybe a little bit of uh, a little bit of tickle of psychedelia. And... Uh, and are we watching this? Fine. Holy moly! I, I, but actually, I mean, it could go either way, really, couldn't it? Yeah, well, oh, absolutely. <laughs> it could be the best experience of life, or it could easily oh, be it one could of be, the worst. Be the worst. Yeah, and, easily. but the one would be the, it would be one of the worst that you would never come back from. <laughs> well, that's it, because obviously the uh, the nature of the LSD in this film is because um, you have this uh, black skull biker gang who are wow, I don't know, they're kind of like black metal cenobites or something. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> like, absolutely mental. So you've got kind of like two different sets of baddies, really, don't you? You've yeah, got the cultists and then these absolutely fucked up by like guys who are permanently tripping now. Yes, I mean, I suppose just, story-wise, I mean, as I say, all the reviews just tell you what's happening. So I don't say there's too much. Obviously, wouldn't tell you what actually what the outcome is or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so. It is uh, Nick? I presume it is his wife. She's meant to be, or not just partner. Uh, I don't know. It's not really, it's wife, not, maybe girlfriend. It's not really. It doesn't really matter, no, does it? I mean, not it's really. Not. No, no. Um, but she is seen by the leader of the occultists, or as uh, I think Nick Cajun describes them as Jesus freaks. Yeah. Um, and the leader takes a fancy to her. Um, wants to get a hold of her, and they employ the um, services of the Black Skulls to to bring her in. Um, and it is interesting to have that kind of, yeah, one set of bastards hiring another set of bastards to do bastardly deeds. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> you're expecting and... it to be like one set of horrendous people, but no, no, it's two. Perfect. No, no, yeah, yeah. And it really is, it really is a really disturbing, dark and disturbing, but utterly captivating and thrilling journey. It really, no. I, I, I've l- like literally never seen anything like it. I mean, I think the... The closest I can think of is the work of John Jodorowsky, mm-hmm. uh, El Topo, Holy Mountain, stuff like that. That kind of level of, but I mean, this is just this just cranks it up to eleven, as they would have said in that Spinal Tap. Do you know what I mean? It's just and it and it's, it looks absolutely phenomenal. It does. It is completely saturated colors, like it is really wild. wild colors. Absolutely insane. Yeah, and like, it's actually. Interesting. I haven't had a proper chance to look at them, but I did notice that some of the sort of uh, the Blu-ray review sites uh, are. I, I, I can see why you know they're not able to give it like you know like the top rating for video, but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's uh, it's you know despite being shot you know shot digital, there's a lot of low light stuff and it's like a lot of oh, really dark stuff. It's grainy. super grainy it's, it's, and grubby looking. Yeah, I mean, and, and that's the thing because it's you know it's not film green, it's video noise, which is a very yeah. very different thing. Well, it's like it's like a modern exploitation movie, really, isn't it? It's like yeah, a modern yeah. grindhouse film. Uh, yeah, absolutely. But like you know. I, the, the fact that that something with, has, like that has been made with, has had a great budget has well, I presume it's had a great budget I don't actually know uh, no I, I can't really find check on uh, <laughs> I don't really find much budget information about it I've just seen a bit of box office but other than that not very much yeah and uh, but with big stars and it, just fantastic it's getting made and it's finding an audience I mean I'd I'd be interested to see how it did. Uh, in terms of cinema, it, very interesting that it came out. Uh, we were saying so it came out on Blu-ray here in the UK on October the twenty ninth. So start last week, um, and but it it only came out in the cinemas here on the twelfth of October. So it was a really narrow window before it came out, which is oh, happening yeah, more yeah. and more. But you know, uh, we watched this on my projector. Uh, Full HD, 1080p, and yeah, it, it just uh, 
you know, it's a bit of an old projector now, but I mean, it's it looked absolutely fantastic. I thought it just looked absolutely amazing, and it sounded great as well. The soundtrack was phenomenal. Yeah, the soundtrack's excellent, and <clears throat> as you say, the picture is super grainy, but no, it really it's suits part of the vibe, it really isn't suits. it? Oh yeah, totally, totally part of the vibe. And what did you make of uh, so? I mean, I think it's safe to say Nick Cage is phenomenal in this. He doesn't really have much to say, does he? But he just pulls no, off some no, it's, really I, I, great acting. Yeah, I think he's absolutely phenomenal in it. I think, yeah, it's... You know, obviously, I think as Elijah Wood was saying, he was obviously heavily involved in the film. Yeah, we'll get into that. But, um, yeah, so he's, you know, very aware of the kind of perception of Nick Cage these days. He, you know, is... There's many a YouTube video of Nick Cage losing his shit, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, but, man, oh, I couldn't imagine a better performance than this. I really oh, couldn't. No. I'm fair play to Cage as well for, like, mm. you know, I mean, he, he, like, like I said, he's made he's made his fair share of horseshit, but <laughs> he's not shy to get down with some pretty crazy movies. I mean, I, I'd love to see this in a double bill with uh, Drive Angry. We didn't, uh, we unfortunately didn't get around to Watching Drive Angry the weekend. No, but, no I th- th- yes. <clears throat> I mean, a very, very different vibe, obviously, but, you know, yeah. still, like, super crazy concept. Oh, they did get around to watching uh, Mom and Dad, one of his... F- oh, we did, yeah, which is which was absolutely fantastic. So, yeah, he, I think Nick Cage is absolutely phenomenal. It's absolutely phenomenal. So other... His girlfriend is played, or his wife is played by Andrea Riseborough, but I didn't actually... Don't actually really know her, but I don't know if I'd have recognised her if I had seen her in something before. No way, I looked God, up some no shots way. of her. Absolutely no way I would and, have recognised her. And somewhat surprisingly, well, I guess it's not surprising really. They're actors, but uh, yes, yeah, from, <laughs> New- from Newcastle, man. Yep, why yep. I pretty well. So uh, she's guaranteed to have a pretty regional accent there. Uh, also interesting that uh, Linus Roach, who plays the uh, leader of the cult, the sort of. Uh, Sort of re, sort of Jesus resurrection figure. I guess he's kind of what's he like? He's kind of um, Manson, isn't he? He's like a Manson esque figure. It's interesting. He's got that kind of Manson esque kind of swagger about him, but also at the same time a total pussy. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. This <laughs> is interesting. Um, it's interesting kind of <laughs> back and forward there. And, and he's played by uh, Linus Roach, who I didn't actually recognise, but uh, is not only English, but as uh, was pointed out by a couple of the guys in the room, yep. Stevie and Mitch, I'm looking at you two, uh, <laughs> actually played the son of Ken Barlow in Coronation Street. <sighs> Wild. What a fucking career journey he's had. <laughs> <laughs> Deary me. And like you said, uh, Bill Duke in there as well. I mean, every performance is a, a, in it is fantastic. The, all the cult members are great. Uh, everyone's just completely bossing it, bringing it top. And I'm guessing that a lot of that's... Di- I mean, obviously, you know, the actors are going to be good actors, but I'm guessing a lot of that comes from uh, working with uh, Cosmatos. And I'd love to see... I mean, there's a couple of extras on the Blu-ray. We're not going to go into a proper Blu-ray review here at all. Uh, this is just a really uh, sort of hit-and-run uh, little podcast. But it's got a behind-the-scenes thing, which I imagine will be your average electronic press kit uh, well, stuff. S- certainly a um, UK disc, almost, almost yeah. definitely. As for that um, menu system. Oh, 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 God. Yeah, released, uh, so uh, distributed by Universal in the UK, uh, which was a surprise to me as well, actually. But, um, yeah, and it's got a couple of deleted scenes as well, which, I mean, usually these things have been deleted for a reason, so yeah. you're not really going to get much insight there. I personally am looking forward to it. This is definitely going to get... I, you know, it's... God, I think, you know, including postage... Uh, it was like 15 quid which do you know what if I if I was to go and see this in the cinema it would cost me 12 quid to go to the cinema to see it so yeah uh, I just yeah I'm happy to pay 15 quid to see it straight away and, and I and think, how many will, people, think how many people you made happy on the day as well I mean, well you know, exactly you can't can't, and, can't put a price on that you can't put a price on <laughs> that and uh, I think uh, I will almost undoubtedly uh, buy that when it, I get, buy it again when it comes out in a special edition, which it inevitably will. It will come out in a special edition at some point. Um, yeah, I mean, I, oh God, if you're listening to our podcast, then you're definitely a genre fan. You know, yeah. you're into your horror, you're into your wigged out movies, you're into your revenge flicks. And if you haven't seen it already, 
And if it's not been on your radar, just go and check out a trailer for it. Go online, check out a trailer, and yeah. then just see what you think. Uh, I would, I can't recommend it enough. If you're even remotely interested in seeing it, then I would thoroughly recommend just spending the money, buying the Blu-ray, getting it watched. Uh, you, I, I just don't think you'll regret it. I, I, I just absolutely love the movie. It's fantastic. I can't wait to watch it again, which I will do so soon. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and for the money, uh, it's certainly worth pointing out as well that in the UK, it's a Blu-ray exclusive with HMV. We yeah. can't find any information about it just now, except that it's a Blu-ray exclusive. It's not available to buy on Blu-ray anywhere else. Uh, that was actually the case with one of the films that we did on the on the main podcast, Is that Raw. Uh, Raw, was it? Raw yeah, yeah, and yeah. I don't know if Raw's available to buy anywhere else yet. Um, oh, I got it second hand, so I don't know. No. Well, yeah, um, that's the thing. Uh, my copy was second hand, and it came with a exclusive. Yep, yep. So uh, sticker on it, so yep. I don't really know how long they have an exclusivity deal for. Can't but, be that long, surely. Can't be that. But. Long. I mean, uh, HMV Online is great, uh, pretty good prices. Uh, they also own the chain FOP, so yep. if you're anywhere near FOP, you'll be able to get a hold of it. Also worth noting that in the UK, it's also available through HMV as a in their retro VHS series, yep. which comes packaged in a fake... It's on Blu-ray, but it's in a fake... Um, uh, VHS style um, sleeve. They're very good looking things, aren't they? That's very good looking things. And they come with a uh, DVD as well, I think, and uh, postcards or press cards or something along those lines. Yeah. Um, I, I Honestly, yeah, just get it bought, people. Uh, what are your thoughts on the film, John? I mean, I mean, I- you know, one of those one of the things I'll say about it is obviously we've got that group of people there together to watch films. And, you know, although. There's not not usually mass dissent between what people think about a film. Sometimes there is, but it's, it's fairly rare. This film was just universally loved by everyone that was there. Oh, and I, absolutely. And I can't really give it a bigger recommendation than that. You've got six people in there who are into their genre films, you know, into that kind of vibe of film, and everyone came out saying, wow, that's absolutely brilliant. And we watched a shitload of films over that absolutely weekend. Absolutely shitload of films. And I would, I could probably guarantee that's everyone's favourite. Oh yeah, totally. I mean, it was a standout film for the, of the whole. I mean, we watched a lot of really great films. Yeah, and uh, I do mean we were, we're talking. We were like um, well into double figures by the end oh, of that yeah. weekend. Yeah. Oh no, no. I think uh, Mitch was saying that he logged fourteen films over the weekend. Wow. As we say weekend, but it was only really two days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Friday night, Friday night, and all day Saturday. That's it. Friday night, night Saturday. Even, Friday night didn't really start until eight o'clock, so it was, that was is, hardcore watching. I logged twelve films and. Uh, I went to bed early the second night. Oh, uh, yeah. Now, what? Ah, it'd be interesting uh, to see if Mitch logged the films after he went to bed. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So I think it went even further, didn't it? Yeah. Did you watch? Did you only watch one more? Or did no, you watch we watched two, two more. more. We watched. <laughs> I've got to admit, we uh, deviated from from the theme of the weekend uh, and did watched you, Adventures in Babysitting and House Bunny, f- followed by the House Bunny. Yeah. Two classics, though. Apparently, Stevie said the oh, Heisman is really good. We put it on. I think Doc fell asleep almost immediately. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, because uh, <laughs> I said this to Rachel. I think I phrased it wrong. Um, <laughs> I think I said you had to go uh, to bed early because you'd been taken down by a dog. That Rachel was said, technically Ra- true. Rachel said, "What?" <laughs> Yeah. Oh, oh no, no, he wasn't attacked by a dog. She's like, oh, for fuck's sake. Okay. Yeah, no. So, uh, yeah, Sam's dog Ellie came into the house. I'm incredibly allergic to that that dog in particular. I'm allergic to most dogs, but uh, all dogs, in fact. But holy shit, that dog sends me into a fucking flat spin. And uh, yeah, I just I went I, I went upstairs to see if I could get some uh, some antihistamines. I was just like, I'm going to have to go to bed. I, to, be, to be fair, by that stage, we'd been drinking mm. for at least 12 hours. Yeah, it was, oh dear, longer maybe, longer. <sighs> dear me, dear um, me. I still think I did well. But, but no, I'm, actually, I'm, I'm actually amazed that we can remember anything about the film, about Mandy. Yeah, well... Um, Although well, we were sober when we watched it. We weren't too bad. Uh, uh, well, we weren't too uh, bad. I say sober, we were probably still about five or six drinks down, but yeah. Yeah. 
in the grand scheme of things, that was Don't, fairly yeah. sober. <laughs> that was fairly sober. It certainly was. Um, brilliant. Well, uh, there we go, guys. Uh, that's our hot take. Uh, join us for some. Will we? Will we say what our planned future hot takes are, or will we not? Um, Jesus, that's a light oh. firework. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get the shit out of me. You practically shot yourself there. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, oh mama! Um, yeah, why not? I think because it's interesting. Um, yeah, well, think- we what well, we've got uh, coming up on our little genre horizon. We've got uh, Suspiria, the mm-hmm. remake, or remake reimagining. We'll find out soon enough uh, of uh, Argento's classic, which we are massive fans of, and uh, you, Doc, and I are uh, booked in already. For our previous to see, and interestingly, we're going to see it in the cameo in Edinburgh a week before it comes out anywhere else. In the so UK. we should be able to get we might be a able hot to get take it. out straight away. Yep. So we might uh, be able to, yeah, before you even have the chance to see it, be able to mm. give you a little heads up. Yeah, and then uh, at the end of the month, we are hoping to get out either if we can uh, get out uh, an early episode uh, on Anna and the Apocalypse. Yep. Um, if not, then we'll go and see it as soon as it's released and get word out to you as well. Film that I'm super excited about. I know the director. Uh, he's an amazing guy. Uh, worked with John when he was just very first starting out his career. And he's a legend. I I am super excited to see it. Zombie musical set in a high school oh, Jesus, in Scotland. So, I think that, <laughs> I, that might have been gunfire. I don't really know what's going on here anymore. <laughs> right, well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> so there you go. Suspiria and the Apocalypse. Uh, hot take from this. Our side mission has been a success. We <laughs> have successfully made it onto land. I told you to watch Mandy. We're now under attack pretty heavily. John's not... John's scared. He's not able to fight back. We're going to fly back to the boat and continue on our journey with the chain. Yeah, unfortunately, I can't get to the guns because they're too far away from the microphone, so I'm a sitting target here, and I'm not happy about it. So let's try and wrap this up so I can fight back. Excellent, guys. Right, thanks uh, Thanks for listening, and uh, we'll catch you soon. All right. Cheers for now. Cheers. <laughs>